And now, the continuing story of another world. I'm glad you came over, Blaine. I thought we should talk. I agree. Would you like a cool drink? No, thank you. Well, tell me if you change your mind. Come, sit down. There's something I want to know before we talk about the possibility of you working here at the arena. Sure, what is it? Are you really serious about wanting to get into my operation? Aren't I already in your operation? Uh, you've been an informant, but this work would be different. I sure hope so. You say that because uh, this would be legitimate? Yes, if what you say is true. I wouldn't lie to you, Blaine. Good. I wouldn't want you to. The thing is, uh, this job wouldn't pay as much as informing, not at first. And uh, it'd be rougher, too. You spend most of the nights on your feet trying to make the customers happy. I wouldn't mind that. And you have to learn the ropes from the bottom up. You have to prove yourself. And my bosses won't go for me putting my girlfriend on the payroll just because she looks good. You have to show them that you've got the stuff to do it. When do I start? Whenever you're ready. I'm ready right now. <laughs> you're ambitious. It's one of the things I like about you. I won't let you down, I promise. Have you ever been around gambling before? Gamblers behave differently than other people. And you'll see that after a few nights here. Excuse now, me, Jordan. Yeah, what is it, man? How come you haven't mentioned Buzz at all since I got here? Maybe I don't like to dwell on unpleasant topics. You didn't talk about him last night, either. Neither did you. Well, you must have known I was thinking about him. What do you want me to say? That I was sorry? He was still working for you when he got killed. So what? Was it an accident? You read the papers. That doesn't answer my question. What else could it have been but an accident? I've been around cops long enough to know that something like that could have been planned. Somebody could have forced Buzz off the road. Guess a guy like that could have had a lot of enemies, huh? Including you, right? Blaine, you're going to hear a lot of things said about me. Some of them not so nice. But as far as you're concerned, none of them will be true. And you know why? Haven't you noticed I'm like a piece of putty with you? Okay. If you say that Buzz's death was an accident, then I believe you. Has your husband moved out yet? Yes, he's gone. Jordan, there's something I think that you ought to know about me. I have to feel a lot more from a kiss before I... before it goes any further than that. All right. I just thought you should know. I like that in you, Blaine. Probably why you're more important to me than the others. The others? <laughs> you're not competing with anybody, don't we? You're wrong. Oh, I wasn't worried. I was just curious. I'm sorry, baby. There's a telephone call I have to take. That's okay. I've got to leave, too. Oh, don't rush off. You I want to be a few stay? minutes. You want me to stay? I'd like to show you how the place is run. Okay. Oh, um, take a look around, and if anybody asks you what you're doing, you're with me. How would you like to come to the supper club with me tonight to check out a new singer? I'd love to. Great. I'll be right back. Not forgetting that you would have had me killed if I'd talked to the police about being an informant. If I've got any brains at all, I'd better never forget that. Please. 
please. Did you hear what I said? I want that rewrite by 5 o'clock, or you're going to be in big trouble. Oh. I'm sorry for the interruption. Oh, it's all right, Bill. <sighs> now, why don't you just finish telling me everything that happened at Miranda's party for Kit and Joey last night? Oh, forget about Miranda's party. I want to talk about Jerry Grove. What else do you know about him? Well, not much, except for the fact that he's a policeman. Oh, not anymore. He's a law student at the university now. And you're really that interested in him? So much so that I don't care what he does. For a living, anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, actually, I've only met Jerry Grove a few times. Don't you find him extremely attractive? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> but I also felt a little bit sorry for him. Sorry? Why? Look at that awful wife of his. Oh, yes, Blaine. You know, I don't know how she manages to trap such desirable men. Well, I don't think he'll be trapped much longer. Oh, you think this breakup is permanent? Well, I don't know. It's a little too soon to tell yet. So it's really just happened. Yes, as a matter of fact, he seemed rather lost last night. So, of course, I played the lost soul, too. You know, my tragic breakup from Matthew. So the two of you have something in common, no? Oh, yes. In fact, he's taking me to dinner tonight so we can help each other. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> oh, very sweet. <clears throat> yes, what is it, Myra? Well, of course I'll see Jamie. Is he out there now? Oh, all right. Uh, well, what time then? Okay, yeah, get back to me. All right, bye. Oh, oh wait a second. Myra, I just rem remembered I'm going to be tied up all day. Well, is it something important? Oh. Well, I hate to make him wait till tomorrow. Um, Myra, why don't you ask him if he can come to my place for drinks at the end of the day? Yes. Yes, then get back to me right away. Bye. Thank you. So it's like that, is it? What? Well, obviously, you're very anxious to see Jamie. Oh, well, what I said to her was true. I really am going to be tied up all day. I mean, Bravo keeps me so busy, I can hardly think. And you'd really like it if Pat Randolph would come back so you can go back to leading a normal life again. Oh, yes. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you know, um, since you've been so honest with me about the special appeal that Jerry Grove has for you, I think I'll tell you what I see in Jamie Frame. Well, it's obvious. I mean, he's terribly attractive uh -huh. and very personable. Mm -hmm. And he's also the boss's son. Or stepson, I should say. Though I happen to know that he couldn't be any closer to Mac if he were his real son. Well, I can see how that would add to his appeal. You realize, don't you, that Jamie is heir apparent to Corey Publishers. Oh, I've got it now. <laughs> I just can't get over how wonderful your house is. Oh, it's not ours yet. Oh, you and Russ put a good bid on it. Don't you think it's just as good as yours? If it's accepted, well, it's close to the asking price. I'm sure it will be. Let's hope so, because I've already started making plans. Really? What kind of plan? Oh, I'll show you. Let's see if I can find those sketches I made. Sketches? Yes, Sketches? I got all excited and carried away, so I I just thought, you know, it's easier to visualize things like that, and I yeah. want your opinion on it. Well, the only room that I think needs completely redoing is the kitchen. Oh, yeah, I want that to look like it belongs in a farmhouse, you know, with one of those big old-fashioned stoves and mm -hmm. the, the copper pots hanging from those big hot, uh, hot books. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the magazines call the country kitchen. Darn. What's I think uh, Russ took those sketches to the hospital. Oh, it's okay. He mentioned he wanted to look them over at lunch. I'll see him another time. Listen, why don't you come to dinner tonight, and I'll show them to you then. I couldn't. Well, I promise we won't talk about the house the entire time. It is not that, Tracy. Then what is it? This is your honeymoon, and I wouldn't think of intruding. Our honeymoon does not officially start until we leave Bay City. It doesn't matter. You've only been married a couple of weeks. Whether you leave or not, it's still your honeymoon. It couldn't be much better, you know? As if I didn't know. 
You can really tell how happy I am. You couldn't conceal it if you tried. Besides, I've seen the same blissful expression on my brother's face. Well, just because we are happy doesn't mean we have to be alone every minute. No, I suppose not. So then join us this evening, yes? Actually, I've already had uh, an invitation to dinner. Oh, yes? Who? That is, if you don't mind telling me. I don't mind telling you. It's Philip. Actually, I think i better call and tell him that I can't make it. Well, why can't you make it? Well, I have a lot of things to do before I get ready to go on my trip. Like what, for instance? Well, I've got to pack. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't go out to dinner. Oh, I haven't even thought of what I'm going to take yet. Hat, you're going to Chicago to see your sister for two weeks. You are not going around the world. You don't know me, Tracy, even to go away on a weekend. That takes me forever to decide what to wear. Honey, you've got to stop drifting. My drifting? Because I decide not to go out to dinner? No, you know what I mean. Your life hasn't had any focus at all ever since you left the magazine. Going out to dinner with Philip is going to help. It might. Hey, listen to your sister-in-law. That's who's speaking now. We're going to talk about this again soon. Ta-da! Ah! I, I completely forgot about rehearsal. Tell me about this party you went to last night. Oh, well, um, Clarice and Larry were there. Didn't they tell you anything about it? No. Whose party was it? Miranda Bishop. She's Kit's, Kit's aunt. You met her before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who took you? Jamie took me. Oh, that doesn't bother you anymore, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, good. Well, oh, Rick Calloway was there, too. Kit's brother. Uh-huh. Right? And just my luck, he didn't show up with a date. So I kind of had my hands full that evening, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But, see, it was a party for, um... Kit and Joey, so who was there? Um, well, Kit's father was there. Mm -hmm. Kit's sister, Amy, she was there. Uh, Gwen Frame was there. Matt Corey was there, but he didn't bring Rachel because, you know, she's expecting yeah. and everything. Oh, it must have been some kind of party, Oh, huh? it was terrific. The food was great. I don't remember when I've had such a good time. Sally, tell me about Rick Halloway. Do you like him a lot? Um, a lot, yes. Okay. I do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first met him, I, I didn't know that he was Kit's brother, and he's not like Amy at all. What is it, Sally? I um, just remembered something that I wanted to tell you. Something about the party? Yeah, yeah, sort of. Well, what was it? First, I want you to know that I, um, well, I don't accept the fact that you and Jerry have broken up for good. What does that have to do wait, with the party? Wait, okay? Okay. Jerry was there last night. He was? Look, Blaine, I want you to know that what I'm telling you is a warning, and it's in no way any kind of gossip, Just get okay? to the point, will you please? The Sorry. point is that Amy Halloway is after Jerry. How do you know? I know. Look, I was there the whole evening. I watched them. They were dancing. They were laughing. Just because they were, they were dancing about... together means she's after him? She zeroed in on Jerry the minute he walked through that door, and she didn't let anyone get near him the whole evening. Look, we're not even together anymore. He can do whatever he wants Look, to do. Blaine, I know you, and I know you're still in love with Jerry. I was never in love with Jerry. Not at the beginning, but, uh, you fell. <laughs> Sally. But don't try to tell me that you didn't, Blaine. You fell. How did uh, Jerry seem last night? A little unhappy, a little uneasy. So, he decided to go to a party to cheer himself up. That was smart. Look, Clarice already told me that you went out last night, too, Blaine. Yeah, I did. Sally, um, what is this Amy Halloway girl like, anyway? Nothing like Kit, I can tell you that. Well, I don't know Kit that well. Well, Kit's, um, I don't know, she's kind of modest. She's basically very nice. But, um, Amy has this very subtle way of making sure you never forget who and what she is. Oh, I, I, I don't think that Jerry would go for that. 
He might, Blaine. If she plays her cards right, he might. You think that she's after him? Fun and games. It's all just fun and games. Listen, I kind of have the feeling that Amy Halloway is the kind of girl that doesn't hold on to a guy long. Well, what are you telling me this for anyway? I couldn't care less, you know? that Russ and I hope to buy. What he was thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I got a great idea for a, a, the, a way I want to redo one of the rooms. You're kidding. And which verse? The chorus. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your big idea? Let me hear it. Well, you know the, the room that I wanted to make into a music room? Yes. OK, well, I thought I'd have it completely soundproofed and then start uh, Tracy? So that we can have Tracy! Tracy! What? What? You cut the small talk, and uh, you're supposed to be rehearsing. Oh, come on, Jason. We were just taking a uh, break. You stay out of this. Oh. Hey, we've been working. I mean, this is the third song we've worked on today. And every time you finish one, you start yammering about that stupid house. It breaks your concentration. No, it doesn't, Jason. Now, come on. Didn't you just say that you were thinking about the house all during the time you were singing the last number? Well, yes, but maybe well, we can do a Well, it showed. To... You brought nothing to the lyrics. I don't care what Dooley says. All right, maybe I got carried away. And that's something you should never allow to happen when you're singing. I know, Jason. It's just that Russ and I don't buy a house every day of the year. Listen, Tracy. When you sing, you've got to put everything into it. Not just part of the time, all of the time. I know that, Jason. You're right. You're absolutely right. Then do it. How many times do I have to say to you that singing a song and putting across a song takes total concentration? That's the first thing you ever taught me. All right, then. Let's... Get back to work, okay? Yes, sir. Come on. Shall we try that again once more with feeling? Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel groggy and weary and tragic, punchy and bleary and fresh out of magic. What a lie. Well, last night was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Miranda sure knows how to give a party, huh? Oh, she does. I think even Joey enjoyed himself. Oh, why? Some of his own friends were here? Yeah. He had friends from both worlds, so to speak. Now, I hope that he counts me as one of those. Because, see, in my book, he's a pretty okay guy. I'm glad to hear that, Brad. Yeah, well, we had a chance to talk several times last night. I know. I noticed. Yeah, and uh, I may be wrong, but I have a definite impression that he doesn't think I am after you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think he's think so. <laughs> well, did he say anything to you? Uh, not exactly, but at breakfast this morning, he said that he'd enjoyed talking to you, and, well, that's a pretty good sign he feels okay about you, too. Well, good. Brad. Hmm. Um, could I ask you a personal question? Well, it depends on what it is. Well, it's about Amy. Ah. Oh, go ahead. Are you hoping for a deeper relationship with her? I don't know what I'm hoping for anymore. Sounds like you need a change. Hmm. Could be. What is it? Uh, Bay City isn't exciting enough for you? No. But there is a new gambling place called the Arena that just opened up a couple of weeks ago. Now that excites me. I didn't know you were interested in gambling. Anything that involves risks excites me, kid. Yeah, I remember the risks you used to take, flying and uh, car racing. Yeah, well, I still do all those things. I'm just taking a little time off, is all. Mm-hmm. Deciding what you're going to do next? No, I already know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to enter a big boat race here in a couple of weeks. You mean the speedboat race on the bay? Yeah, got my speedboat shipped up from Philly. Brad, two men were killed in that race last year. I don't know how you can stand the danger. Danger is what makes it sport. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to lounge around Miranda's pool all day. 
Hello, Craig. But some people have to earn a living. See you. Look what was delivered to my door. Oh, <laughs> nice. Who's that boss? Matt Corey to thank me for the dinner party last night. Oh. Oh, I love it. Mm. Um, Miranda, I'm feeling a little bit restless, so I think I'm going to shove off, all right? Oh, I thought you were going to spend the whole afternoon with us, Brad. Oh, I changed my mind. Oh. Right. Thanks for your hospitality. Well, you're welcome, darling. Bye, Kit. Bye. Oh, that's lovely. Got into him. I think he's bored, Aunt uh, Miranda. Really? Listen, I... I think I'm going to get going, too. Okay? Oh, kid, don't rush off. Uh, no, remember I asked Michelle thing to do? Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, don't you think, Kit, that it's a little strange that Rachel did not show up at my party last night? No, I don't think it's strange at all. I happen to know that it's par for the course for a pregnant lady not to feel so great all the time. I don't know. I get the feeling that there's something uh, wrong between Mac and Rachel. And I have the feeling you're completely wrong. Mm. Listen, what did I do with my pocketbook? I... Oh, I left it in the living room. Darling, do you really have to go? Yes, I do. And I'll find my pocketbook. I'll come back and I'll say goodbye to you in a minute. Mitch, how'd you come in? Yeah, in a minute. Oh. It's a shame about Rachel, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's so funny because the last time I talked to her, she sounded so enervated. Is something wrong? Uh, no, I just forgot that uh, I've got the keys to the cash reserve club. Keys? Is that, is that something serious? No, 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 it's not serious. It's just that I've got to take care of it now. Oh, well, can't you phone? Yeah, I could, but I'd still have the keys. I see. But I will see you later. Okay, we're on the set. Oh, all right. Listen, thank you for the swim. Mm, you're welcome, darling. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Please come back. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Yes, hello. Oh, may I speak to Mitch Blake, please? Oh, he's not there. Ah, uh, I am. Um, did he by any chance stop back there just for a few minutes? He did. Ah, uh, no, no. Thank you. There's no message. Change your hair for me, but not if you care for me. Stay, little Valentine, stay each day. Valentine's Here in time oh. for the finale. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hi, Dooley. Thanks. Jason, how are you? <laughs> now I can talk about the house all I want, right, Jason? No. What about the house? No, oh, well, while Dooley and I were rehearsing, I'm afraid I was daydreaming about the house we hoped to buy. Got in the way of your work, did mm, it? <laughs> my Spengali seemed to think so. Right. But now that uh, you're home, we don't have to worry about that. Jason, I think we'd better clear out and leave. Rest alone with his wife. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you and Jerry C. haven't finished working on that last song. Uh, Jason, our agreement, remember? Yeah. Well, look, <laughs> I'll do some work on it tonight, and then tomorrow we'll pick up where we left off. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, did you bring the uh, sketches home? Yes, yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I have a couple of ideas about some of these rooms myself I want to talk to you about. Good. Good. Take it easy. Okay. Bye, Russ. So long, Dooley. Thanks so much for being patient with me. And Jason? Yeah? 
I promise I will concentrate while we're working during rehearsals from now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Oh, alone at last. Yes, come over here. Mm. Did you have a good day? I had a great day. How about you? No complaints. Mm. I, I'm dying to hear your ideas about the house. Well, so you shall. But first, did you show this place to Pat? Yes, yes. And she thinks it's absolutely perfect. Doesn't think it's too big? No. Especially after I told her there might be uh, several little Matthews running around within the next few years. Hey. <laughs> Uh, you know, we haven't ever uh, talked about having children, not seriously, anyway. No, we haven't, but I've been thinking about it ever since we came home from our wedding. You have? Do you really think that you can handle that? I mean, a, a marriage, a career, and children? Oh, yes. I know I can. And now, the next part of Another World. Oh. oh, well, I need to take a raincoat when I see Alice. Yes. Rains in Chicago, as it does in other cities. Which one should I take? A gray one or the slicker? Slicker's not right for summer. Sounds more attractive. Oh. I think some more on it. Pack tomorrow. What's the matter? Oh. Oh, I, you haven't forgot our dinner date, have you? Philip, I meant to call you and tell you that I couldn't make it. It just slipped my mind. Oh, but... I'm really sorry. I've just been so preoccupied about getting ready for the trip. That I don't know whether I'm coming or going. But... It's okay. It's no big deal. No, it, it's it's unforgivable. I'm, I'm really sorry. Well, we can have dinner when you come back. Well, at least... Come on in and have a drink or something. No, I can see you're busy. No, please, I insist. I'd feel terrible if I couldn't offer you some wine. All right, but I'm only going to stay a minute. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Pat, please, don't bother. It's no bother. Really, I don't want a drink. Well, just have a glass of wine. I'm having one. I'll tell you what, why don't I help you change your mind and we'll go out for dinner. Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, we won't stay out late. We'll go someplace nearby. I've already eaten. Oh, you have? So let me get you the glass of wine. As you can see, I've been really busy packing. Uh, what I mean is that uh, I'm busy thinking about what I'm going to take. That's the most difficult part, don't you agree? Well, yeah, I mean, deciding what you're going to take on a trip is uh, difficult. Because it's easier for men, huh? Probably. How did Jen? Oh, I've been good. Fine. <laughs> good. Pat, you have eaten, haven't you? Didn't I say I have? Yes, you said... What makes you think I haven't? I'm not hungry, Philip. I haven't any appetite this evening. What are you 
doing? I'm taking you out to dinner to get something to eat. No. You're getting something in your stomach. I don't care if you're hungry or not, you're going to eat. I want to go out. Okay, then we'll send out for something. Have it brought in. <laughs> you really don't give up easily, do you? When I'm right, no. Philip, you're very sweet. I promise I'll get something to eat in a little while. Okay. Oh, you said you had something in the refrigerator. Yes. Look, I know you're worried about me, but really, I'll have everything all together once I get back from visiting Alice, my sister. Right. Well, she's a nurse, isn't she? That's not why I'm going to see her, Bella. That isn't what I meant. Alice and I have always been very close. We've always been very close. How long are you going to be gone? Um, a couple of weeks, so. I see. You'll see, when I come back, uh, it'll be a change. I, uh, I'll be un in control of everything, including... You know what it's including. Oh, uh, where are you going? Well, you said you had food in the refrigerator. Well, yeah. Well, I thought I'd stay and make you some dinner. Oh, Bella, please, I couldn't let you do that. Why? You afraid I can't cook? Oh. Oh. I'm sure you're a very good cook. Okay, then I'll rustle you something up to eat. If you insist. I'll show you where everything is. Okay. <laughs> here, let me clear out some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, it's such a mess. Looks like a lot of work here. Oh, yes, I do. Listen, you don't have to clear it out because I'm used to have lots of manuscripts around. Yes, I remember. There. Now, I just wanted to clear off the space so that I could start serving drinks. You do want something, don't you? No, thank you. You sure? Yeah, I really just came by to tell you I saw a kid at Miranda's party for her and Joey last night. Oh, is that why you wanted to see me earlier? Yeah, well, I saw how upset you were. You know, you thought that Kit was real angry at you, and I thought I'd, you'd want to know what you said. Mm. Should I sit down and brace myself? No, no, everything's okay. She's not harboring anything against me about that bravo? No, or? not in the least. Isn't that great? Oh, <laughs> Jamie, I'm so relieved. Oh, you know, even though she told me that I was forgiven, well, you just never know what secret resentments people might be holding against you. Yeah, well, Kit's not the type. Oh, thank heavens. Oh, Jamie. You know, one of the last things I want is to have people think that I'm unfeeling. Nobody thinks that. Well, I don't know. You know, if I keep this job, people might start to think that I'm a... Well, you know, that I'm turning into one of those stereotype women executives. The, you know, the type that are tough and abrasive and just not very feminine at all. No, I doubt anything. Anybody could feel that way about you. Well, just keep telling me that and... and I'll feel a lot better. What is that? Is that, uh... Is that curry? Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Curry of lamb. Ah, right, right. Made that for me once. Uh-huh, just after we announced our engagement. Yeah. When things were going so well for us. Well, that didn't last very long, did it? <laughs> Come on, we had some good times. Well, all right, all right, I'm not denying that. You know, we could have some good times again, maybe. I mean, if we both wanted to. Yeah, you mentioned yesterday something about um, going back to... Uh, Simpler time in our lives. Yes. And you reminded me that things weren't so simple then for us. I'm a realist. Then I've got a realistic idea. Why don't you stay for dinner? Come on. You know, if, if you have to leave immediately afterwards, I'll understand. For that matter, you know, I've got all that work to do that yeah. I brought home. Well, it was very nice of you to ask, but I... But you've made other plans. 
Oh, that's okay. You know, it was just a spur of the moment idea. As a matter of fact, I haven't made any other plans. Then stay. All right, I will. <laughs> I'll go put on the rice. You know, I am very surprised by you. Why? Well, I, I thought after that big spread, you know, Bravo, about that party of the month thing. Uh huh. You know, I thought that the last thing you were doing was leading the simple kind of life. Oh, Jamie, what do you think? I have parties here all the time. Well, I didn't know. And I certainly didn't figure you'd cook for yourself. Well, I do. Whenever I can, I have to for my sanity. Yeah. The other thing is just a facade. <laughs> just for the magazine, huh? Completely. It's not my thing at all, Jamie. What I really like most is just having a quiet, simple dinner at home. I sometimes think that I, I failed Blaine. I know, I used to feel that way about Matthew, too. Even though all my friends told me there was nothing I could have done to keep the marriage together. Did you feel lonely after you left him? Oh, I still do, Jerry. But the worst part was the first few weeks. That's why I know what you must be going through. Yeah. I think about Blaine all the time, even though I try not to. Well, there are ways to forget. I wish you'd tell me what they are. Well, it's a little different for everyone. I mean, I wanted to reach out to the first man who was nice to me just to prove that I was still worthwhile. What happened? Well, I had to deliberately hold myself back. I was afraid I might get myself into a situation I couldn't handle. I wonder if I'll be, ever be ready for another relationship again. Oh, you will, no matter how unlikely it seems right now. But how long does this feeling last? It's like I'm dead inside. Well, it gets easier every day. You don't, you don't really notice a change at first. It kind of creeps up on you. And then one day you look at yourself and you say, hey, I'm alive again. I'm sorry, I've been holding the floor too long. I've been doing too much of the talking. I no, guess. no, what you said makes a lot of sense. Look, Jerry, if you want to get anything off your chest about you and Blaine, I mean. Oh, it's so recent. I, uh, I find it hard to talk about. Uh, did you ever think about getting even by turning to someone else? Get even? Well, it's only normal when you split with someone, no matter what the cause is. But that's just it. I, I'm too tied up in knots to even look at anybody else. Well, just make sure that you don't get involved with the wrong woman. It's a terribly dangerous time for you. Pardon me, would you like to order now? Oh, we haven't even looked at our menus. Could you give us another one, oh, please? Okay. Uh, Jerry, I just had an idea. It's terribly hard to talk privately here, so maybe we could go to my apartment afterwards and talk. What do you mean, what am I doing? I am changing the sequence for your first set tonight. Because that, uh, that guy from the arena is coming to hear me? Yeah. His name is Jordan Scott. I want you to be nice to him when you meet him. But, Jason, you're getting rid of all my ballads. Those are my best numbers. Yeah, you got rid of all the love songs. Uh, do you know what kind of joint the arena is? Yeah, it's a gambling place. Right, and it's very flashy. I heard you were ill. If I had been ill, Mac wouldn't have attended the party. What are you so nervous about? I don't want Mac to come home and find you here. You just arrived when I left, so that's what you're worried about, don't be. Okay, you've seen. I'm all right. No, I, I haven't seen. Well, then why don't you just take my word for it? Would you tell me if anything was wrong that might affect the baby? No, I would tell Mac. Mac's not the father. Yes, he is. Did you avoid the party because you were afraid of seeing me? Yes. 
I was more afraid of what Miranda might make of it. If you think you were invited to that party for any other reason than to, for her to cause trouble, you're mistaken. You were the one who warned me about Miranda, and now you're playing right into her hands. She has no idea that I'm here. Well, what excuse did you give her for leaving the party? It's not important. I said I was going to the club. And you hadn't talked about me at all? No. She mentioned that she had spoken to you earlier and that uh, you weren't feeling well. And then you left? Yes, I left. There's no connection, so don't worry about oh, it. Oh, don't count on it. Look, can't you understand that I came here because I'm concerned about you? You have no right to be concerned about me. I love you. That gives me some sort of right. Don't ever say that to me again. Whether I say it or not, you know it's true. Max's love is the only love I want. His love is best for this baby and for me. Or do you want this baby to come into a world where a mother can't stand the sight of a father? What's eating, Mitch? Dumb question. I know it's eating, Mitch. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Another World. I've got to talk to you. What is the matter? Now you've got to get moving. On what? On Brad Garrick. What has got you so worked up? I just walked in on an intimate scene between Brad and Kit at Miranda's this afternoon. Well, I thought you were making progress with Kit. I am making progress, but you've got to keep Brad out of the way. Well, um, I've got, I've got a big shot coming to hear me sing tonight. I can call him, ask, tell him that I'm nervous, and... See if he could come down and give me some moral support. How's that? That sounds good. Look, don't worry. I'll give it everything, okay? Yeah, well, if you've got a little more, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Here is the final lineup for the first set tonight. Okay. I'll see you later. Uh, Jason? What? Uh, you weren't too agreeable when Russ showed up at Tracy's this afternoon. I wasn't? You know you weren't. You're on a collision course with him, and I think you'd better be careful. No, no collision course, Dooley. He'll never know what hit him. When Tracy starts hearing that applause again, she's mine. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.